really cool looking down uh, as you come up along this canyon leads down into the Mammoth Hot Springs right up that way to the north. I mean, we've got our sights set on the old top of Bunsen Peak and it's just right up here. <music> All right, what is up out there, Park Junkie Nation? How are you today? Todd C., Kevin to you here from Yellowstone. Just stopped in the Canyon Visitor Education Center here just to check out the scene, see what kind of information they had available, backcountry desk, all that in there. I am today jumping on the motorcycle, got the bike parked right over here, and we're gonna do a little loop on the northern, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make a, a round on the northern loop. We're gonna head up uh, over to, from Canyon right here over to Norris, and then northbound, and I think I'm gonna stop up there and try to uh, do a quick run on Bunsen Peak, see what that looks like. And then we're gonna continue up to Mammoth and then around to Tower Roosevelt, maybe get up on Dunraven Pass and do Mount Washburn for sunset this evening before we head back to Lake Village. So just a little trip today out here in the park. Uh, it's a sunny afternoon, looks like good riding weather, good hiking weather. So let's get on the move and see what we've got in the Northern section of Yellowstone today. Well, nice to be back out on the trail. I'm just gonna get a little short one in today because I'm just getting back into the park. Had a few days of R&R &R outside the park. Time to put on some miles and get myself back in condition for some of these climbs that I have planned later in the year because right now, ugh, I'm not in the strongest of condition. There are some peaks around here in the northern area of Yellowstone I'd like to do. Electric Peak up there, Mount Holmes over here, Sepulchre Mountain, a little smaller one there. But I'd like to knock some of these peaks out. Mount Sheridan down in the south part of the park. But then tomorrow, I've got a plan to head up a local peak. I'm gonna keep it secret for now, but you might be able to guess what it is. If you've watched any of my recent videos have mentioned it a couple times we'll see if we can't get up there tomorrow i'm gonna go out and try to join my buddy clint for a quick scamper up a local peak well but today one objective right now and that's bunsen peak right here in the northern on the northern loop this peak named for the gentleman who invented the bunsen burner no less. Now, I don't know much about him other than his name's Bunsen. He uh, had a scientific mind, it so appears. And uh, therefore, whew, the park named this peak for him. All right, so as I get up here, uh, above the fall, looking down on the roadway here, the news crew down here interviewing some someone, and I don't know what is going on there. I don't know why uh, that's happening, but maybe something of interest took place here in the park, and Park Junkie knoweth nothing about it. I'll just yell down and get today's news right from here. I'm sure they don't know. All right, we'll continue on up the trail. Entering some views now. Look at that. Looking out toward the north. Electric peak back here toward the east, actually, before we swing over to the north. Mammoth Hot Springs out there. Looking down on what is the town of Gardner out there, but we can't quite see it yet. That'll probably come into view here shortly. Gallatin Mountain Range out in that area forming the kind of the western boundary of the park over there before you 
get out into Highway 191 over there running along the western border of the park. Yes, indeed. Looking good, looking good out that way. All right, making our way up the trail. Yellowstone as brilliant as ever. Collars the green just popping right now. It's like July 7th or 8th, July 8th, I think today. Just brilliant, you know. All right, folks, the Bunsen Peak Trail is delivering great views. Look out back this way, Electric Peak, Mount Holmes back here, the absolute Swan Lake right down here, moving southward out that way toward the north, Geyser Basin just down here. Wow, it is absolute greenery out here in the meadows, high in Yellowstone. Look at that, fabulous afternoon. We'll continue upward here on the trail. Pretty steady climb the whole way, but it's not bad. It's pretty mellow overall for a climb in Yellowstone. Well, I'll tell you what, after you uh, exit the little forest down there, which was quite nice, well, you get up here in these dead trees where there was fire a few years back and uh, starts to heat up quite a bit. So Park Junkie is once again busted into a serious fit of perspiration as I climb high above Kingman Pass and the Grand Loop Road right down below us here. This stop right here, Kingman Pass, one of the first stops for a lot of people coming into the park because most, a lot of visitors, I don't know about most, but a lot of visitors come in through the north entrance here in Gardner, Montana, cross into Wyoming, pass right up by through Kingman Pass here on their way down to the Norris Geyser Basin. So, this one of the first scenes for a lot of visitors to Yellowstone. In fact, I recall it was one of my first scenes when I entered the park 25 years ago. Right there, we stopped and I was like, damn, this ain't Kansas. And it's not. No offense, Kansas, but this ain't Kansas. It is a fabulous view looking out toward the Tower Roosevelt section of the park. This the northern boundary of Yellowstone right there. Below us right here, Mammoth Hot Springs and Mammoth Terraces here, the Travertine Terraces at Mammoth right below us. This the north entrance of the park right there, the little town of Gardner, Montana and the Yellowstone River 
running right through this section right here. This is where all the floods took place that damaged all the homes from here northward along the corridor of Highway 89 going up to Livingston there on, and, and junction with uh, I-90 up in uh, southern Montana. Today, looking out on this area, back to normal in many ways, except for the businesses aren't open, only the gas stations, and I believe a general store will stop in and check on our way through. But no restaurant facilities, no uh, laundry, no shipments, no nothing. This place is pretty much shut down. Gardener out there once again connected with the outside world, but I think there's a lot to still be done. It is a fabulous afternoon up here. The summertime weather in Yellowstone could not be better here. These last uh, few days, the last week, week and a half have been spectacular. Absolutely the best weather that you could ask for while visiting the world's first national park. Just, just stellar weather all the way through. The trails have been rewarding. The sights have been unfolding before, before our eyes as we tour through this landscape of this otherworldly landscape, I might say. Man, right there looking above the vast wilderness of Northern Yellowstone, just a magnificent 2.2 million acres of wilderness here. Right up here we reach the peak, Bunsen Peak, at 85.64, right near the top. Well, the winds have come up on us out here in Yellowstone atop Bunsen Peak. We're looking out to the south right now with about a 25 knot gust right here on the summit. Beautiful. We had perfectly clear skies down when we were doing the lower section of the hike. Winds were nominal up here on the summit, however, a different story. We will have a little challenge working the audio out on this one, but we'll make it work. That's what Park Junkie does. Here on Bunsen Peak this afternoon, looking back to the west on the Gallatin Mountains. Electric Peak right back here. That's on the Park Junkie to-do list. Over to Quadrant Peak, Fawn Valley, Bighorn Valley, Antler Peak, and Mount Holmes right there, which is also on the to-do list. Here on Bunsen Peak, there's three separate little peaks. You've got this one over here with the receiving station on it. You got the second one right here, which is pretty nice. Just some old blocks from some structure it used to be here. I came to chill over here because there were people over there. And then there's a third little, third little summit right there that you can also access. So there's three separate little peaks up here you can enjoy. That third one gives a nice view out over the Gardner River and the Black Tail Deer Plateau off to the east toward the that's toward the Tower Roosevelt section of the park, just over here. Looking out, you really can't see much. Right, right on the other side of that mountain right there, that's Tower Roosevelt section of the park, Lamar Valley out past that. Looking out to the south right now, we see the Gardner River right here with the Sheep Eater Cliffs right along that. Down into the Norris Geyser Basin and back toward Mount Holmes right here. The the Gallatin Mountain Range with Bighorn Pass, Fawn Pass, Antler Peak right there. That looks like a nice little spot as well. Just up here chilling above Swan Lake, looking out on the Grand Loop Road. Bunsen Peak, baby, view's pretty nice. We're gonna head back down the trail now, get down to the bike and continue our tour. So here we go, onward.
All right, well, a little excitement here on the trail. Bunsen Peak, a breeze, right? No problems with Bunsen Peak. We can hike that all day. However, we did have a little incident here. Park Junkie slipped on the trail above and his phone went flying out of the POS uh, little uh, tripod that he has. And the phone went flying literally over the cliff and toward the road below and a massive cliff right below me here. This thing whoosh, down into uh, the creek below. And I <laughs> searched for the phone. I'm thinking the worst. This phone has gone over and is long gone. No more phone for Park Junkie. But it was lying right here. Blocked from further downfall by this small tree that's laying here. Thought we'd lost her right there. That was a sketchy zone. Just when you think life looks like easy street, there's danger at your door. That's what a famous band once said, I think. Yeah. And yes, indeed. Got a little scar on the leg there, a little blood. No big deal though. The phone back in my possession. It's a big bonus. Um, big bonus. Yeah. So I literally just threw my phone over a cliff yep that was pretty good i mean i've been disappointed in it today actually and did consider throwing it at one point but i didn't i held back and you see what happens it goes anyway it must have just been some sort of like i don't know uh strange like subconscious effort to get rid of my phone so i slid off the trail and tossed my phone over a cliff Luckily, it didn't quite make it. Wow, the trailhead has cleared out. Now, I don't know where all those people went. There are only two vehicles in the parking lot now, aside from my bike. And when we got here, this place was packed. But as you see now, it's cleared out. It's 420. Ugh, I'm having a real hard time today. Fall over that. I've got to get off this fucking trail. I don't know about Washburn. <laughs> I don't know about Mount Washburn. <laughs> kind of thinking like I should just tuck myself in and go to sleep here under this culvert. All right, well, back here at the trailhead, the bike ready to roll. Some folks just uh, pulled in to do the uh, bike trail out, but other than that, there is no one here in the parking lot now at 4.30 p.m. Bunsen Peak, that was a cool little stroll right there. We're gonna jump back on the bike and continue around the North Loop right now. So the uh, Bunsen Peak right back here, excellent little hike if you wanna get in a little elevation with the view of the north end of the park. This is a spectacular option right there. 4.4, like four and a half miles up and down from Bunsen Peak. I'm gonna try to go over, maybe pull, a, pull something on Mount Washburn. We'll see how it goes. We're on the move, jumping on the bike. Mount Bunsen in the bag. Headed homeward, let's go. All right, well, the visitor center opened here at Mammoth Hot Springs. You got the Yellowstone Forever store and the visitor center here in the Horace Albright Visitor Center, Mammoth. Not much else going on here these days. The hotel, the dining room, all of that's still closed up here at the northern entrance. However, the visitor center is open, which is a good sign. We're going to make our way back over to the bike here. A lot of elk usually in the lawn out here, but they're all over in the shade of the hotel at the moment. And as you look up into this area, you'll see this is a lot of the finer Park Service housing here. And then back here, Bunsen Peak. That's where we were looking down on the Mammoth Village here. And as I said, yeah, you can get fuel over there. The general store's closed, but there is a little store there at the fuel thing. I don't think they sell much. They sell fuel, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, the dining room, the hotel, everything closed out here in the Mammoth District. We're gonna jump on the bike and head on over toward Tower Roosevelt. So as we saw, the Tower Lodge and Roosevelt area back there all closed down, except for the fuel services there. But just about two and a half miles up the road toward uh, Canyon Village on the Tower Canyon area there. Uh, Tower Falls, a little hike back here to Tower Falls. We're gonna take that in a second, but we're gonna stop into the general store, which is open here. And see what they have inside the general store. All 
Alright, well a brief stop at the old general store got me an ice cream bar for a buck twenty. That's a dollar twenty well spent. Now I'm just gonna climb up here on this rock and enjoy. All right, well you can see down here, we are on Tower Creek right now. And as we look out, we can see the floodwaters reached out into this zone in here. And it has came out probably about, I'd say an elevation rise of about four feet right here, above maybe five feet even above the water behind here on Tower Creek. So we had quite a bit more water here than we have now. Uh, you can see the flood lines here a lot of debris got washed out here, so there were some heavy waters flowing through here during those floods just a couple weeks ago. So while we're here at the Tower General Store, the Tower Fall, only 300, uh, no, 500 feet, 500 foot walk out here. <clears throat> so we might as well go check it out real quick. I mean, it's literally just right here. All right, so we've made it out here to Tower Fall, and this is a spectacular scene here on the Northern Loop. You don't want to miss this, but it's very close to the parking lot. It's not far at all. It's only like 500 feet from the general store up here where I got that nice ice cream sandwich that I munched on for a minute. Before I came over here to the falls so I can enjoy the falls all that much more. So this is a brilliant scene out here. Uh, you can, this is the, kind of the end. It's all paved right to this point. It's, it's a brilliant little end of the trail down here and it's not far at all from the store. So you'll definitely want to check out Tower Fall while you're here driving through the Tower uh, Junction, the Tower Roosevelt Junction right here. Well, the parking lot sure clears out after the store closes, I tell you that. Tower Fall is vacant right now. <laughs> So there's one thing to keep in mind for checking these areas out. Ah, the bike looking good here. Looking dusty, almost ready for a bath. Yep, soon come at the bath for the 890. But we're gonna jump back on the bike right now, a little more revving and we'll get to the south. Let's go. Ah, the great outdoors. All right, friends, I am departing right now to head up toward Mount Washburn here at Dunraven Pass. Went up the Dunraven Road here, the Mount Washburn Road. We're going to get up here and see if we can't get to the top of Mount Washburn. All right, that'll be a perfect end to the day, I think. Oh man, what a day. Look at this. Sunset coming in on the park junkie right about now. That's not going to slow us down. Upbound, headed uptown, Washburn, Mount Washburn Summit, right ahead here on the Chittenden Road, Dunraven Pass, North Loop, Yellowstone. Beautiful. Not that much further to go, y'all. Nice marmot. All right, we're coming close to the summit. We've came a long way along this ridge line. It goes really slow on this old road, but it is a nice view. Whole time looking out toward Dunraven Pass. The eastern side of the park, excuse me, the western side of the park. Yes, yes, let's not screw that up again. Down here, the north, out toward Tower Roosevelt, Lamar Valley, and we are headed up, bound, and down toward that moon high above and under it. 
the top of Mount Washburn. Moving well up here now. We don't have a lot of wind on us. So Park Junkie set the controls for the light of the sun. Now the summit right behind us as the sun continues to fall in the western sky. We're on our way up to the summit of Mount Washburn right now. I don't think it's more than 400 feet away. So we're headed right up there as we look out to the south. We can actually see the Grand Teton tonight down in the far distance. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone right here. Mount Sheridan out to uh, what would be the slight east of the Teton Range here. And our destination right now, the summit of Mount Washburn. Come along, let's check it out, shall we? Oh man, continuing up here on Mount Washburn and the layers of Yellowstone unfold before our eyes. Look at that. Northern reaches of Yellowstone National Park right here. It's lit up like a Christmas tree right now. Well, all right, as we get up here atop Mount Washburn, we find that there's a massive facility here of some form, some kind of high tech, what have you, up here, which kind of, which kind of ruins it for me up here, really, as the summit's concerned. I'll enjoy the view, but I think people actually live here, it looks like. I think it's a private residence. Yeah, they've got some sort of facility up there with a spotting scope right here in the window. But looking out over the landscape as we go toward the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone right there, kids. All the way out, seven mile old right down in here. Uh, yeah, that right there. That's where we went on the last hike. And today we're looking out on it from above. All right, friends, it is sunset in Yellowstone. And we're high atop Mount Washburn, 10,219 of them. Got a stellar little sunset up here tonight on Mount Washburn, looking out toward the east right now. We've got a crew of bighorn sheep just making their way up here into the sunlight. All right, well, we're gonna bid farewell to our high top living up here on the top of Yellowstone. Whoever has that gig, somebody's up in there. They've got a pretty cool gig because they are literally sitting on top of Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, so that's breathtaking scene right back there. Grand Canyon, the Yellowstone, Yellowstone Lake out in the distance there. You can see all the way down to the Grand Teton down in the south. Spectacular here on top of Mount Washburn this evening. All right, well, we're going to have to get out of here. The sunlight is a dying, and we've got three miles, 2.8, they say, back to the bike. And then we've got to rip down to Canyon Village and then further southbound to Lake Village where we will retire for the day. All right, friends. Well, that is just about going to wrap it up from here in Yellowstone today. We had Bunsen Peak and Mount Washburn right there today. Quite a little double, double decker right there. Put in about 11 miles total. Maybe about 3,000 feet elevation gain total. Had a nice ice cream bar over there at the tower. Uh, tower Falls, we checked that out. Pretty cool day overall. Um, I'll take it as a win, even though we had some weird events today. And both summits kind of a letdown in that they had some sort of man-made structure atop them. But the, the, the routes to the summit's great. This one's on a road here at Mount Washburn. I probably won't be doing either of these mountains again anytime soon. But you'll want to stay tuned because we have plenty of other things in order here at Park Junkie. In fact, tomorrow... I believe my buddy Clint and I, we're going to go attack a peak here in Yellowstone. And let's just say that when we get to the top, I don't expect to find any man-made structures. So you've got that to look forward to. 
which is nice. All right, well, I'm going to check out here. Hey, if you're coming to Yellowstone, you need a guide to the park, check out parkjunkie.com. It's your fix for national park info. And with that, I'm going to jump out of here, get on the bike, and head southbound toward the old canyon village and then further south to Lake Village, my friends. Thanks for tuning in. It's a fabulous sunset. We'll check you on down the trail, my friends. Cheers.